So Samsung brought us down to their developers conference 2016. We're not developers, but we are interested in a lot of the same things that developers would be. One of the top trends this year is, of course, the Internet of Things or IoT. The difference this time is that the momentum finally seems to be really picking up. For the first time ever, there are more internet connected devices than there are people in the world. I really feel like I'm doing my share to make that happen, by the way. And as the install base has continued to increase, there has been an exponential increase in software development. So one of Samsung's big announcements is Arctic. A three-tiered hardware offering, the Arctic 1, Arctic 5, and Arctic 10, offering a range of functionality from pretty similar to an Arduino to capable of machine learning. And the demo they did on stage, while it might have had a bit of a cringy uh, high school science presentation feel to it, was really cool because the point was to demonstrate some of the amazing flexibility and openness of the software and cloud side of Arctic. So they used Resin.io to push an update to nine devices simultaneously over the air without any loss of connectivity. Pretty cool. So let's have a look at some of the other cool Internet of Things stuff that's on demo here at the developer conference. So this is the Auto. It's actually very similar to a project I backed on Kickstarter a little while ago called the Jibo that I pretty much backed so that I could make fun of it when it arrived because it wasn't going to do anything near what the team was promising it would be capable of and was extraordinarily expensive. But the key difference here is that Samsung is not positioning the auto as a retail product, but more as a proof of concept for what their Arctic 5 processor can do. So inside the auto, you've got an Arctic 5, which is an ARM-based processor. You've got a high-definition camera, a 320 by 240 pixel resolution screen in the front that it uses to express itself, whether it's blinking eyes or little smiles or whatever else the case may be, a powerful natural language engine. Turn the lights color to red. Change the lights color to green and the ability to interact with other devices through the Arctic cloud. So in terms of demos, they had it turning on and off connected lights. They had it looking things up, similar to what an Amazon Echo would do. You know, who is George Clooney? To which it would reply, George Timothy Clooney is an American actor, screenwriter, producer, director, and activist. Thank you very much for that, Auto. It can wake up, it can go to sleep, and it can even do things like check on traffic for you if you're heading out somewhere and for whatever reason your phone is less convenient or whatever the case may be and it can take pictures for you just uh, it can't necessarily do anything to make you look any better so this little number in front of me here is called the Eddy. It was entered into the Makers Against Drought competition. It actually ended up in the top 10 and is competing in round two where they're gonna have to take this very prototype looking thing and turn it into something a little more commercially viable. But the functionality is expected to be very similar, just better. What it is is a desalinator. That is to say it removes salt from the water. So they're targeting farmers, specifically in California, although the applicability would obviously be a little wider reaching than that, who are buying brackish or importing agricultural water with a salinity level that is too high for the crop that they're trying to grow. So the way that it works is fairly straightforward from a, you know, I'm an idiot looking at a box perspective. The water goes in the one side, you've got these uh, foam uh, membrane and plastic sort of layers here that the water goes through and then you pump in voltage here and what you effectively get is highly concentrated salt water out the other side that pumps back around through the system and then desalinated water out the other side. So they're not really measuring it in terms of like liters of water processed per minute because we're not talking about making the water potable. We're talking about targeting a particular crop. So they used avocado trees as an example and they're saying they can handle about a tenth of an acre per hour with the current system. Although by doubling the size, giving it more membrane area, they figured they could dramatically increase the output somewhere in the neighborhood of like thousands of liters per hour. The way that it ties into the whole Internet of Things thing is that it's got a whole lot of cool stuff going here. They've got an Arctic 10 that is handling the pumps, the valves, the salinity sensors, and actually connectivity that allows you to check up on your system with the mobile app. You can monitor it in real time. You can see if there's a problem with the system. And you can even generate reports so you can make decisions about how to manage your fleet of eddies or your crops over time. So here I've taken over the Afero booth completely. I've actually kicked all of their staff 
out and uh, they've, they've abandoned it so I can talk about what they're showing off and they call themselves an end-to-end -end IOT connectivity something anyway so basically they've got themselves a little development module right here that in a nutshell is a Bluetooth connected 4 GPIO connected doodad that you can either well, in a perfect world, integrate into a device at the time that you're designing it, or as part of their demonstration of how their platform is open and will talk to pretty much anything, you can actually literally solder it into an existing product or even use it to communicate with something running a Samsung Arctic processor like this one right here. In a nutshell, their goal is to simplify security. They've got their own 256-bit encryption layer that sits over top of normal Bluetooth security and pairing using QR codes on every device so that connecting things to a smart home is easier than it's necessarily been in the past. And on top of that, they want to make it easier for the product developers to create interfaces for these products. So they've got a cloud tool that effectively acts like UI Lego. And you can basically say, okay, this connection right here controls this on-off switch right here, drag and drop a little box, blip, bloop, on or off. But it doesn't just do on and off. It can actually talk spy to the device. So you could do more complex things like say, okay, here's a, a motor power percentage value or here's a CPU temperature that you can report back to the user and you can design your own UI around it or you can not. Totally up to you. Interesting. So thanks for checking out our Internet of Things Roundup here at the Samsung Developer Conference 2016. Don't forget to check out our Samsung Developer Conference 2016 playlist if you want to see our other videos and get subscribed if you haven't already.